It's time for Tell Me Why, where we unite a sharp-minded elementary school student with an expert to answer questions about their favourite passion. Today we're joined by 10-year-old Natalia Eddy, who has a question about one of her greatest loves, computers, and computer science expert Louis Sobel, who will try to answer it for her. Natalia, uh, you have a question about computers, but first, just uh, before we get to it, just tell me what you mo like the most about computers. Um, I just think they're really cool in general, how they can access the internet, which opens up to so many things, and how you can save and do all sorts of things on the computer. What do you like to use it for? Um, I like to just go on the internet in general and type stories up. Cool. Are you a writer? Yep, I guess you could say so. Good. What sort of things do you write? Um, I like making fan fictions and sometimes just my own stories. Awesome. And you use, uh, you use your word processor for that? Mm-hmm. Do you, do you go on social media at all or are you too young? Um, like I think Facebook I'm too and young. Twitter and things like that? Um, I don't. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, what, do you have a question for Louis about how computers work? Yes. How do computers store thoughts and information? Louis? So computers store information. Um, they're not like us. They don't understand words or pictures or anything. But they are really good at understanding numbers and two numbers in specific, kind of one and zero. And so they use those kind of two numbers to store information. And there's different ways of kind of recording ones and zeros inside of a computer. And one of the most common is using magnets. So have you ever used a compass or seen a compass? Yes. So you know that a compass can point you know, in one direction or another direction. And so based on which way the compass is pointing, you can think of like pointing north or up, that's a one. And pointing down or south, that would be a zero. And so computers have millions and millions and millions of these microscopic compasses inside of them that are used to kind of store the information. Louis, how did we come to the realization that ones and zeros could represent all kinds of information, things as abstract as not just math, of course, but pictures, videos? Who came up with that? Sure. Well, it was developed uh, early. It came from the branch of mathematics. It actually had nothing to do with computers or anything. And then when engineers were trying to think of a way to build a computer and store this, kind of they thought about how mathematicians had discovered information theory and ones and zeros could store all that and they used it to build computers. Natalia, I want to take a look at a few things that you have stored on your computer. We have some images here. Let's take a look at, uh, at, at those images. Is this something you drew? Mm -hmm. What is it? I use, it's one of my favorite My Little Ponies, Pixie Pie. I used an online drawing program. That's great. Do we have another one of these? There's another one. Do these guys have names? The first one's Pinkie Pie, and the second one, I think, is Ocean Pearl. Isn't it amazing that all of that is just stored on such... Oh, what's this? What are we looking at here? A screenshot. Of? Um, it's something I watch on Netflix a lot, and I wanted to show some examples of how I can take different screenshots, and it just shows the paused frame of... So, Louis, what's going on inside the computer when, uh, when Natalia is, is calling up these images? What happens inside the computer to make them happen? Right. So the computer's job is kind of to take the ones and zeros that are stored, you know, in the magnetic uh, little microscopic compasses and to pass it to your display, which is in charge of displaying it in a way that we can understand and those pretty cool pictures there. So the computer's job is to take the information and turn it into something we can see and understand. I want to take a look at like some of the images of the early computers because one of the amazing things, Natalia, that always blows my mind about computers is just how quickly the amount of stuff that we can store on them is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Let's take a look at some early images from the early days of back when IBM was playing around with, um, with the original computers. Look at that. That entire thing probably has less memory in it than your, your iPhone in your pocket or like than a, than a pocket calculator does. Louis, explain to us how, how we're able to, to continue shrinking all of the data into ever smaller spaces. Sure. So it's been a pretty good process over the last you know, 100 years or so where we've gotten better and better at manufacturing computers and manufacturing the storage and digital storage. And so as we get better and better at that, yeah, like you said, we're able to cram into a space the size of your iPhone what used to take up a football field size room. 
Natalia, do you have any questions about that? Well, um, I have one. So with all the ones and zeros mm -hmm. become the actual image or the screenshot. Sure. So it's kind of hard to think how you can represent an image as ones and zeros. That's a, is that what you're asking? I guess, yeah. OK, so let's take a, pretend you have just like a black and white image. That's more easier to think about. Mm -hmm. So let's let a zero be where the image is white. And a one would be where the image is black. And so you can imagine how a bunch of little zeros and ones, if you imagine them instead as white and black, you could draw a picture with them. Wow. So, so by breaking the picture down into lots of tiny little pixels, you know, every, every picture, if you zoom in on it far enough, any, every digitized picture is really just a series of, of little dots. So as long as you know whether the dot is supposed to be on or off, black or white, together, they all come together and they form a network, a quilt, that forms the, the overall picture. Does that make sense, Natalia? Yeah. So one of the other incredible things that you can store, of course, on computers is things like music and video. I, I, it still boggles my mind how you can create, how you can listen to a Beethoven symphony just out of ones and zeros. Can you explain that, Louis? Sure. So if you think about an image and you break it down into those tiny little pixels where each pixel is on or off, you can, you know, amazingly do the same thing with music and sound. You can break it down to tiny little pieces, and then whether it's kind of like high or low, loud or soft, those can all be different kind of one or zero things. And you have millions and millions of them, and that's enough to uh, reproduce sound. And what are those ones and zeros made of, Louis? I mean, in the, in the physical world, inside the computer that's sitting in front of me, what, what are they? Sure, well, in most computers right now, they're actually li tiny little compasses, tiny little pieces of magnet that are either pointing one direction or the other. Um, but throughout history, uh, the first kind of digital storage was actually holes punched in paper. Um, and then, then they became magnets, and now it's kind of just even sometimes we use pieces of electricity. Natalia, do you know what you want to do when you grow up? Um, I probably want to be an author, a cartoonist, and I've also been thinking maybe making video games. Making video games? Programming them. Oh, video programming. What kinds, of, uh, what kinds of video programs and video games do you like? I like all the Pokemon series, well, which is basically an RPG video game. So that's the kind I would want to do. That's the kind I usually play. Cool. If you didn't have a computer, what would you do, Natalia? Um, I would probably read lots and lots of books, do a lot of drawings, until... I would probably wish there's something else I can do too. <laughs> I'm sure that in 50 years' time, there'll be 10 year old girls uh, who have all kinds of things that we currently can't imagine. Thinking back to 50 years before, and they'll be saying, I can't imagine what I would have done if I was 10 years old in 2013. I would have wondered what I, I would have been thinking about all the things that I miss. I think you never know what you miss until, uh, until you actually have it. But uh, Louis, look forward for us and uh, put on your, your prognosticator's hat. Where do you see computer storage going over the next 10, 20, 50, 100 years? Sure. Well, you know, a big thing, big trend recently has been movement of digital storage to the cloud, where you could have access to effectively almost unlimited data storage because it's somewhere else and you don't have to carry it around with you. And you kind of just have access to what you need when you need it. So, you know, all your pictures of Pokemon and stuff that could be on your computer or in probably 10 years, they won't be on your computer. You'll be able to access them from any computer anywhere in the world. And you said that uh, in the early days, you could, all of the stuff that was stored on hard disks were just stored on reams of paper, of like ticker tape, right, with holes punched in them for the ones and the zeros. Nowadays, we use little tiny compasses, little magnets inside our computer. Is it, what, what are we going to use in the future? Do we have any idea? Well, one thing that we're going forward, and which is already used, uh, you know, like in the new solid state drives, like in the new MacBook Air or in your cell phone, probably where it's actually little batteries instead of magnets. And so it can quickly charge a battery or empty a battery. And when a battery is charged, it represents a one, and an empty battery represents a zero. And so going forward with that. And there's also been some research into storing information in completely different ways. Like I know 
some researchers have used DNA, which is the chemical inside our body that determines, you know, what we're going to look like and be, use that to store digital information too. So there's lots of research going on in different kinds of storage spaces. Natalia, have you heard of DNA? Yeah, I don't really understand it, though. I know it kind of makes up who we are and what separates us from others, but I don't really get it much. <laughs> it's pretty complicated, but it's also pretty amazing that we might be able to store all of the information in the world using not metals and material things outside of us, but in the very genetic building blocks that make us who we are. I think that's mind-blowing. Uh, Natalia, thanks so much for being with us. It's great to meet you. Great to meet you, too. <laughs> Louis, thanks for filling us in. This has been entertaining. Yeah, my pleasure. You can let us know what you think about computing and the miracles thereof by leaving a comment in the comment well. You can find links to informative articles in the resource well. This is HuffPost Live.